Hey everybody, John L here. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, we are playing track and field two tonight. So this is gonna go a little bit differently because uh, this is not a game which has kind of like a plot or uh, an ending or anything like that. Um, it's a track and field game. It's a sequel to Konami's original track and field. Uh, it uh, has pretty much all the same events from the original track and field plus a bunch of other ones. Um, we're not going to play Olympic because I was just attempting that and I can't even get past the first three events. So uh, we'll do training mode. Um, with training mode, we'll do one player. You can pick uh, between pretty much all the events. I think there's um, arm wrestling, which is just a two player thing. And there is a, a shooting one, which I think probably is part of the Olympic um, thing. So anyway, since I can't get through like any of the events uh, in Olympic, we'll just go through this. So Track and Field 2 is um, a sequel and... Uh, it's definitely a uh, step up graphics wise from the first track and field. It features a lot more events. Alright. So when I was like practicing, like, I found these guys will kind of skewer themselves. Yeah. Of course, they're not doing that when I'm recording, but why not? Oh, shoot. There we go. So yeah, you just need to kind of get close and like stab the dude. Like, one thrust and one parries. So I remember when I was a kid uh, playing this with an S advantage, you just like turn it on turbo and crank it and like, <laughs> so just murder these guys. There's kind of some skill involved in this, but I don't know, honestly I would say it's kind of just like luck. Ugh. And I'm pretty sure there are probably some people who are really good at this, but I could care less. Ah. Oh. Alright. So there's only one round. The computer kicked my ass. So, with training, as soon as you fail an event, it's over. Three to five. gonna see that a lot. So I guess in 1988 this actually was a good looking game that was pretty fun and um, considering what sports games were at the time you know this is a pretty cool sports game but I mean just with how you know sports games are these days or track and field games um, this is really, uh, really classic. So, triple jump is it something I'm just terrible at. I can't figure it out. So you have to jump at certain angles, and I've never ever, um, actually crossed the, uh, line using, uh, without using a, uh, turbo. So this game is one of those games where you will definitely be getting a workout by tapping the buttons. This is what Turbo was made for. I don't know why every game that had to have running had to have button tapping like this. So, holy hell. Nine meters twenty six. That's two failures so far. I'm two for two in failures. So let's see if we can keep this streak going. So for some reason, I can't believe I actually own this game as a kid. I don't know why I bought it. And now I have it again. It's like, I don't know. I guess maybe it looked good. So swimming is, uh, you have to alternate, I think. 
and you can jump. All right, come on. Yeah, let's win an event. Win an event. Win and come on. Okay, so you don't wanna. What the hell? I have no idea what's going on. But I lost! So usually I get out of the turn like way too early and start uh, pressing the button. So I thought I'd coast, but uh, obviously that's not great, also. So three. We lost three events. Let's see if I can win one. I was actually doing way better in training. Um, so like I said, this is a sequel to uh, Konami's original track and field. Um, I think that one had like six or eight events. It was an arcade game that they ported. Not sure if this was an arcade game. Um, definitely has a lot more events. You can see... What are you talking about here? So this is, what, 12 events? So there's a lot of uh, cool stuff here. High dive. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. So I'll probably lose four events. Um, but I think the first one didn't have like any aquatic stuff, so there's no swimming, there's no canoe, um, no no gymnastic stuff. So the horizontal bars here. Um, so there's a cool diversity of like games, but um, yeah. I don't know. I think it's uh, creative that they try to do diving here. So, from my understanding, you press the A button and you can choose um, how you start out. So, I don't know, let's go crazy here. Handstand, baby. And then you jump off and then you um, press the uh, D pad to kind of rotate and tuck and do all that stuff. And then I think you're supposed to open up in the land, um, you know, without making a splash, pretty much how diving works, which I'm not too much of a pro on as it stands. Okay, so that was probably not too good. Oh! Look at that, killed it! Okay, well, I guess we'll just do... <laughs> All right, so it's probably best to like just uh, play this to begin with in training because I have a feeling I would not be able to pass this in Olympics. Like they crank up the uh, requirements. All right, let's see. Let's do twist. Yeah. All right, whatever. I'm not quite sure how you get a good score. I assume it has to do with some combination of all the stuff that you do and then obviously how you hit the water, but to me it's just uh, button mashing. But 8's pretty awesome. Look at that. We actually passed an event. So clay pigeon shooting. Um, I think this is kind of something that they had in the first one, but definitely looks better. Um, so when you press the A or the B button, um, it's gonna release a pigeon, then you have to track it with the D-pad, and you have two shots to hit it, and you have to hit 25 out of 40, which is kind of daunting. So B is to release it, and A is to shoot, so let's see how we do. Yeah! So sometimes they're far away, sometimes they're close. Oh, great. Alright. There we go. Alright. So when I was practicing this, I was one, doing better, but two, like you, you can shoot like once on the way up and then kind of wait for it on the way down. That's kind of a good way to do it. See if we can make this respectable. There we go. Alright. Three for ten. 
Showing signs of improvement, let's go. Alright, cool, one for one. Okay, so I think the thing that would suck is if I just do terrible for the next round or two, and then literally it doesn't matter for the fourth round, but we have to play it. So, let's see how we go. Yeah, alright, cool. Let's see if we're getting it. Oh, hell. Ah. Yeah, that one's nice. Alright, cool, 10 for 20. Gotta step it up a little bit, but 7 for 10 was pretty good. There we go, see that's what I'm talking about. If you let it uh, kind of crest, you can kind of get it on the way back down. I was gonna say I'm a mean skeet shooting machine, but I guess I just did. There we go. Alright, seven for eight. Okay, so what do we need? We need seven more of the last ten. It's one. Oh, two. Three. On fire. Four. Five. Making it look easy. Six. Come on. Seven. Uh. Bonus. Let's go ten for ten. Ooh. There we go. Okay. So with uh, the trap shooting, skeet shooting, whatever this is, um, you kind of get the picture. They just kind of shoot out from wherever, and um, I think the timing takes a little bit of training, clay pigeon shooting. Um, but it, it kind of gets progressively easier as you play it. Oh, hammer throw. This is awesome. So this is actually a really kind of different event. So what you want to do is you want to circle the D-pad, and then when you gain enough momentum or power, you want to release it, and I'm terrible at this event too, so I don't know what releases it. I think you pick an angle, it's kind of like a mix of the triple jump, which I'm terrible at, and then like a whole new different type of power thing, which I was also terrible at too, so let's go. Alright, he'll start flashing, and then fall down. So when he starts flashing is when you want to release the hammer. Okay, and I would say you probably want to like let it go at around like a 45 degree angle, probably with like more power than I had. So let's see. Oh yeah, look at that. That's a winner. So again, believe it or not, this is a lot easier with the NES Advantage. Um, with the joystick. It's just way easier to kind of keep speed and momentum versus using the D-pad, so... Um, I don't know, if you want to murder people at track and field too, I would suggest you also get an S advantage. Cool, so what are we, like, two for six events or something? Alright, so fencing, we lost. Triple jump, we lost. Freestyle swimming, we lost. High dive, we won. One for four. Clay pigeon shooting, two for five. Hammer throw, we lost. So, two for six. Okay, Taekwondo is awesome. I actually like this. Not for like any good reasons though, just because it's ridiculously easy. So again, this is another event where having the NES advantage is murder people. But... Um, literally if you just keep kicking the guy in the face. So what is it? There we go. 
Okay, just straight forward kicking. I'll just run into you, so just, yeah. Ultimate button masher. Is it going down? So you don't really even need to punch or do anything. Just kind of like, just keep that kick and move forward and that seems to be good enough. Yeah, come on. I wonder why they didn't use black. I mean, I've never seen anyone like in a pink or purple gi. Boom! Every time he jumps, like you kick him in the ding dong. Let's go. Ah! Oh. Whatever. This event's all about like walking and kicks. So, as long as he's getting the worst of it. So uh, it looks like it can go, you know, multiple rounds. There's a timer. There's rounds and all that stuff, but. I don't know, you'd have to really be playing this seriously to actually have it go like multiple rounds or something. You know who won. That's right. So there's a diversity of games, at least it's not a whole bunch of, you know, button mashing, like running games. Um, you know, the, the Clay Pigeon shooting, the high dive. Oh, this is gonna be awesome. So Pole Vault is another um, cool button mashing mixed with precision event. I guess that's the theme of this game. Button mashing mixed with precision, which is kind of like a terrible thing. So you just run with A and then there's like not even like a marker and you have to like push B so that you would somehow get like the tip of that pole into like the box. Get it? Get it? <sighs> I might actually do this again because it's kind of cool when you can hit it, but then like... I don't know. I wasn't half bad at this. Ah. So yeah, I mean, there, there's not really an indicator on when I'm supposed to actually hit the B button, I don't think. It's either that or I never actually like paid attention to it. But, this is one of those things where it's like, if you play this a lot, you'll probably get good at like the pole vault, but if you don't play it at all, you'll have no clue on like, when and what you're supposed to be doing. But yeah, again, like, it's just all like, button mashing mixed with like, other precision stuff. Again, with an S advantage, way easier. Yeah! Ah, oh, you don't know how hard that was. So you want to hold the, uh, I think B button, yeah, and then let it go at a certain time. Yeah, there you go. I kid you not, that is like so rewarding feeling, just with how impossible everything else is in this game. But like, if you want to do like any really high jumps, I guess I could really clear more than that. See, you kind of get into a groove like once you know. The only problem is like, I think there's more events. Nah, whatever. More events that require button mashing, so it's like, I don't know if you and some friends are playing this. I don't know why you'd play this alone like me, but if you're playing this with friends, you guys are all gonna have like ridiculously messed up fingers like by the end of the night. It's gonna be a fun drinking game. Whatever. So it's possible to do the pole vault, you just need to kind of get the timing down and everything. So the whole Olympic mode, it's cool, but I don't know why I'd want to do that. Um, it's kind of hard enough just to do these events individually and like putting them all together is... I don't know, it's punishing. And there's a password uh, system, but if you don't know the password, it won't let you get out of it. It's like the most ridiculous thing ever. So. Canoeing, this is actually kind of maybe my one of my favorite events. So press the A button to like go forward. 
And then you have to go through all the gates. And did I mess that up? No, okay. So five, if it has an R, I think you have to come around. Oh, okay, I did that the wrong way. Maybe you have to go backwards through it. So there's like all these, I think this is the one you have to, yeah, have to go around. So you see the little markers on the uh, right hand side. Okay, oops. Oh wait, ah. Okay, so uh, R is reverse, but you need to come from the top. So this is timed. It's not really difficult. Like even with a regular controller, I'm like doing pretty okay. You have to watch out, some of these are out of order too. But this, this event's actually pretty fun. And it's kind of a button masher, but it's kind of not. Boom. There we go. Oh, let's see what... And So you, you go through all the gates, and then they just kind of tally up your score at the end, and... See how you did. We passed, so that's cool. Uh, unfortunately, the the course is the same all the time. So once you know how to do it, then you could probably literally just like tear through this thing. Oh, so you have two attempts. All right. Let's see if we can do this quicker. One, two. Whoa. Okay, so that one's out of order. So then when you um, are going like upstream, it's harder. Alright. So I think that's the only one that's out of order. Pinballing around these things. Ah. Seriously, the canoeing is actually like pretty good. Could have made this like a game by itself, maybe. I don't know if really All right, come on. Yeah. It's like. That is actually not a bad event. Hand is like, okay. Decent amount of fun, good graphics and everything. So I think the order that they're listed in the training is actually the order that you go through because I know the first events were fencing, triple jump, and freestyle swimming. So, uh, anyways, moving on, uh, archery, so we have to hit the target, we have 30, 50, 70, 90 meters. Um, at the bottom you can see that there's a wind. That actually is kind of deceptive, so the wind is in reference to the dude up on the top. So that means that there's actually wind going to the right. So um, at 30 meters you're super close, you don't have to worry about it. Um, Again, this is more precision than anything else. I think when you, actually, I don't know. We'll see. Um, you have to decide beforehand your angle so you can choose left and right. Um, and then also you can angle yourself up and down. So for this, I don't think we need to worry about anything. So let's just shoot it. Alright, okay, so, nope, cool, it's a button masher. Um, at this, so you press A and then B to shoot. Oh man. Okay, cool, so for this, with three meters of wind, we should be fine. Alright, and you can see it kind of drifting like left to right. 
all that kind of stuff on uh, the top. It's not bad. I believe this was in the first track and field, and um, I think it's just maybe improved on the graphics and playing stuff. So, so we need to get 50. So it gets progressively harder like the farther this thing goes out. Um, all right. Sweet. So I think you get three attempts at each distance. So now we know that 14 meters of wind is a lot. So we'll angle it a bit to the left. So um, at greater distances, the uh, wind really matters a lot more. So. Okay, cool. So even, you know, all tilted that way, it still ended up uh, drifting quite a bit. Let's see. All right, let's do this. So again, with uh, NES Advantage, um, you can really crank the arrow power. Um, at 30 and 50, that's not too big of a deal. At 70 and 90, like it will be. All right, so this one looks like it's just like a headwind. Come on, you can see the arrow dipping too. Boo. Oh, we should have angled it up, okay. Womp womp. This is actually kind of fun. Um, I don't know why they needed to make it a button masher. I mean, it'd be cool just to hold down a button or something like that to um, shoot the arrows, but whatever. 1988. Yeah, so for 70, you definitely want to angle it up, and let's see what we do. Alright, that was cool. 31, so we need 19. Holy hell. So you definitely want your dude to be like angling this sucker up. It's like the laziest arrow ever. Oh, so sad. I don't know what kind of like wind would cause that to happen. I mean, it's an arrow. It's not like a bus. So. Okay, so we got no wind, no nothing. Still, we're gonna angle it up because this is hard. Hopefully we can get like a... I was gonna say bullseye, but I guess two is cool. Alright, so I would say... We're probably not gonna do too well. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. I don't know how to score 11, so. Oh wait, but we have two shots. So nine meters to the left. Let's go to 10 degrees, and then oh, we have to shoot it up also. get a bullseye in this one and be like a miracle. Oh no. So close. Do like 25. So this is kind of math. And like already my hand's tired. Uh Maybe, maybe, maybe. Ugh. 
That is like the least amount of payoff. You don't know how hard that was. So I would say if you don't get those points on like the first uh, six, unless you're using like something with auto, uh, I wouldn't bet on it. Oh, hurdles, this is hilarious. So again, being a track and field game, I would have expected like more running and stuff, but on your mark. this is one of the few running events. Okay, so I guess A is start, but... On your mark. Get set. So you want to jump kind of like near the end. So that you don't end up in the water as much as possible because it slows you down. Every so often, like, one of the computers will fall down, it's freaking hilarious. Yeah! So, unfortunately, that didn't happen, and I really don't want to do that again, so... But, yeah. If anything about the hurdles is good, it's watching them fall. Okay, so the horizontal bar, this is going to be the last event that we'll play. I don't know how to do it. It's very similar to the, um... Alright, it's very similar to the, uh... Uh, high dive. Um, you use the directional to, um, do moves and stuff. I'm not quite sure, I think. Uh, maybe directional also, like kind of sets your direction for the event. I don't know if I'm supposed to be on here. Power, oh. Oh no, so check it. Ooh, come on, that's gonna get me like a five right there. That was sick. Come on, nail it. Okay, it's good. Okay, so A, pressing it rapidly gives you more like power and you can spin around and then D-pad, you do like moves and stuff. Again, very similar to the uh, high dive. So that is uh, track and field two. Um, I don't really feel like playing it anymore. Um, it has uh, the training mode, versus mode, which I guess could be fun with friends, Olympic mode, where you compete against the computer, and it's really difficult. Um, yeah, it's not really great. I mean, it's uh, a lot of button mashing, which uh, I don't really know anybody who really loves that, who wants to play a game that's just almost all about, like, button mashing. Um, it's got a good variety of events. Uh, it's got good graphics. Um... Yeah, if you uh, just don't have anything else to do, maybe play track and field too. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, take care, guys.